All right, hey everybody. So I'm just doing a quick guide. Well, it's not gonna be quick. It's gonna be long, in fact, on how to compile OmniROM uh, for my Google Nexus Seven. Uh, now, just a couple quick notes. I have never compiled OmniROM before, so this may be a learning experience. You may see a little bit of roughness with this. Just chill out. Uh, it'll all be good. Second note is the Nexus 7. Uh, anyone who's worked with the Nexus 7 uh, knows that there's a couple of, there's two variants. There's the 2013 edition that's codenamed Flow and the original, uh, which is codenamed Grouper. Uh, mine is the original, codenamed Grouper. That is the one we're going to be uh, working with. Uh, there's going to be a couple of guides and stuff that I have sort of cobbled this together from in the description. Uh, one of them is is based off of Flow, or is a guide for Flow for signage mod. Uh, just be aware that 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 basically I did a search or replace with my eyes on Flow for Grouper. Anytime they refer to that, I just swapped them out. Um, uh, this is a, a, a guide for Omniron, but because there is a little bit more documentation out there for signage mod, I, I, I leaned on, on that a little bit. Um, so I was actually just doing this, and I thought I might as well record it and throw it up on YouTube. So I'm a little bit ahead of the game already. Um, where is my guide that I'm looking at? Um, so, uh, we're going to, I'm going to assume a couple of things. Uh, one, that you have a, an XS7, or that you are just interested in learning how OmniROM works. Uh, that it is, that your device is uh, already, uh, has a, a Clockwork Mod or Team Win Recovery. I guess it would probably have to be Team Win Recovery. Um, project bootloader on your device. I think OmniROM works with uh, TWRP. Have you ever seen that? Um, I don't know that it yet works with Clockwork Mod. I'm just getting into it. So, anyways, uh, I'm going to assume that you've done that. You've got your tablet rooted. You're ready to go. Um, another note about the guide, the one guide that I'm link linking to on the Signature Mod Wiki. Uh, there's one script that you run that uh, is not appropriate for our version of the Nexus 7, or the Nexus 7 that uh, that I've got. Um, there's a little script that pulls out the, the binary blobs from the device and throws them into your uh, build environment. I'm not actually going to be using that. I'm going to be pulling them down directly from Google because the script doesn't work with the version of the Nexus 7 that I have, so. All right, so we've got an unlocked uh, bootloader, hopefully a good recovery on it. Uh, one thing that I will, uh, so, uh, one thing I will let you guys in on is uh, there is actually, if you're running, so this, this is a, a VM that I'm SSH'd into. Um, it is a, an Ubuntu machine, uh, and it's 64-bit, and there is, it's hard to type and talk at the same time, uh, so you can install uh, tools, fastboot, and ADB uh, with apt-get. Um, oh, I forgot the install. That's what happens when you, you type commands and talk at the same time. So I already have them installed, so it's going to say you used already the latest version. Um, so it's kind of, it, they made it better to download the Android SDK, but I find that a lot better than downloading the whole thing, finding it, putting in your path, all that stuff. So uh, one thing, I'm using uh, an Ubuntu variant of 13.10. Uh, 
One thing that you'll want to check when running, when dealing with Android versions of 4.2 and later, I only just found this out, so I'm trying to let people know that you want to make sure that you're running 1.0.31 or later. Uh, in 4.2, Google decided that, hey, people are leaving USB debugging on all the time. It's probably not a good idea to just have promiscuous AEB sessions happening every time you plug in your device to a computer. So you now have to authorize it on your device when you do some ADB, fancy ADB mind melding. Uh, make sure that uh, you're running this version or later, otherwise you're just going to get a you know random device offline message, like I don't know what to do if you're running anything uh, later than that. And there's a lot of like pre-built tools and stuff like that for Android and rooting and stuff like that right now that is running older older versions of stuff, so just keep that in mind. Um, so there's a whole bunch of packages that we need to install. Sudo install. Uh, also, this is a 64-bit ver, 64-bit. Uh, um, system, so there's a couple other tools that we have to uh, we have to install. Right. So that get install those ones as well. So I've already installed all of these because I don't want you guys to have to wait for a thousand years. Uh, to be watching me do that, uh, that all that information is in the Cyanogen Mod Wiki article that I'm linking to. Now you'll notice in here we're using OpenJDK and JRE. Um, honestly, a lot of you know some people say, oh, you know, you have to use the Sun binaries and it'll whine at you saying you're not using the blessed Oracle bits. I don't care. So feel free to install the Java, the Oracle based Java if you want. I'll let you do your own research if you're interested in doing that. Um, excuse me. So we've got our packages installed. Um, now we're going to, so I've, uh, you see I've got a couple of folders here. Uh, this is a basic home folder. Um, so bin is where our, where our repo command is going to live. Um, you can just curl that down with uh, curl. I've Make sure that you're, you might want to research this one on the net to make sure that that is the actual correct URL that you're supposed to be getting repo from. Uh, repo does have the ability to do, like, I think it's repo space self update or something like that, or self dash update. I don't know. I have seen that URL change and using the wrong version of repo is, is kind of bad news. So, um, I've already got it downloaded. Uh, Let's download it again. Why the hell not? So, uh, so if we do an ls in that file, we see that uh, there is a, a file named repo. Now, uh, I've already done this, so it is currently executable. But you do need to chmod it to be executable because it is an actual. Uh, application or it is a script or whatever you want to call it uh, uh, you also want to make sure that you have exported uh, slash home slash bin to your path and you could toss that into I uh, threw that up there pretty quickly uh, so if you hit enter now it will export it to your current session. Um, 
Uh, you can also toss that at the end of your uh, dot bash rc file. Oh, sorry, I have to be in my home folder. So if we go to the end of my dash dot bash rc file, we see export path, blah blah blah. Once you log out, log in. If we echo our path variable, sorry, case sensitive, we see that slash home slash elitist slash bin is in our in our, our path. Now, if you're not super familiar with path variable or the path variable, basically what that means is that when we, when we call the command repo, it that is one of the locations that it looks uh, for it in. So that we can be anywhere in our directory structure, call it like a run repo, and it will look for it there and run it. Uh, just do it because it's good. That's what I'm going to say. So, um, now I've also got a folder in my home folder called Android. And a lot of people, for like consistency sake, make a folder called, you know, home folder slash Android slash system. Because I'm using OmniROM on here, I want to differentiate just in case I throw a signage mod on here. Uh, I'm just going to call it a different, a different, uh, different thing. So, and that's not going to screw up anything. You'll, you'll be fine. So, um, now I actually already have. Once again, I already have the repo set up, uh, and it's actually syncing right now in another window. Um, but if you do, you me see if I can find it. So when you initialize your repo, uh, because it's not cyanogen mod, you're not gonna, you're going to be referring to OmniROM on GitHub, and the branch is not CM dash ten point two as it is with cyanogen mod. It's Android. 4.3 and you know what I actually respect that because Sanjay Mod's crazy naming standard with like 10.2 equals 4.3 and 10.1 equals 4.2 is stupid and 11 is 4.4 like I don't care so I'm actually okay with that um, and then once you've initialized the repo it's gonna spin for a few minutes and then you're going to run repo sync. And that's the big one that's going to take like a thousand hours to do. That's why I've got it going in another window or another session, I should say. Um, so, you know, once you've done repo sync, friggin' go to bed or go out and see the sunshine or, you know, that big fiery globe in the sky. So, um, another uh, handy thing to do is uh, we're going to do some C caching, which basically reduces your, um, when you compile stuff, like you'll compile it the first time, and then from then on, you won't have to compile near as much stuff. Uh, really speeds things up uh, for subsequent builds. So, and we're just going to export that to our current session so that. All right. So, we're also going to uh, set uh, we're also going to set now we can't run this command until our sync is done but 
uh, we'll run it we'll run it after the sync is done. And basically what that does is gives you a C cache of 25 gigs. Make sure that when you build your VM or the box that you are running it on, that you set that appropriately. Um, I, my VM I think has 100 gigs, should be plenty. So, um, yeah, if you're not going to do at least 10 or so gigs, probably not even worth using C cache. So, yeah. Uh, so I will uh, pause the recording and we will return once our repo is synced. Now, and just one more note about repo sync. So if you've never synced a repo before, it takes a hell of a long time to pull it down. It's like on a good connection, it can be like an hour or two. On like a really terrible connection, it's probably going to take like a day. So, um, so yeah, that's why I say go out and do something else. Um, and what else am I going to say about that? Uh, yeah, so, but uh, subsequent uh, repo sync. So, like, basically, when you're synchronizing your repo, you're copying down what uh, the Omni Run project has put onto GitHub. And every time you, uh, the reason we use Git instead of just downloading the files is so that when you sync it the next time it doesn't take like a day to sync it it takes you know a couple minutes um, based on you know it's more the longer you don't sync it so it's good to sync your repo every couple of days just to make sure you've got the latest fixes and changes um, so yeah uh, see you on the other side of this edit alright so when we left off our repo was syncing uh, now we're just about ready to get to compiling uh, and do a few things before. Actually, we're going to do a few things before then. So let's take a look. So um, I said that we wanted to set our C cache to about 25 gigs, uh, but we had to wait until our repo was done syncing. I know this, remember, using Ccache, totally optional. I like to do it, just because it will, if I need to compile again, it's going to speed things up a little bit. Um, and you'll remember that I said subsequent repo syncs will be much, quite a bit quicker. So let's just go through one quickly here. And we're seeing the percentage just go up much quicker. Uh, you know, 61 of 377 items, uh, rather than I need to get 50,000 items. <laughs> so, uh, much quicker. So, uh, next we're gonna see. Usually at this point on Signage of Mod, we would we would be looking at pulling down our pre-built apps um, so once this is done syncing we're, we're gonna take a look actually I guess I could go to another window and while that's syncing just at least poke around a little bit so let's see what we've got in this folder so normally See what we've got in here, Omni. So normally that that is a a, a CM folder for Xenogen mod. So so it looks like uh, let's see what's in utilities. Service, utilities. Rebuilt nothing super interesting. Uh, what did I do? Pre-built. Uh, pre 
UTC. Yeah, nothing super interesting in there. So, looks like Omni has their own uh, boot animation, which I'm excited to see that actually. I haven't even seen that. Uh, let's take a look at the config. Branding, gross CDMA. The letdown. Anyways, it doesn't seem so. Usually, there's a few uh, pre-built apps that are uh, that we would run a script to get in here. It doesn't look like there's quite as much here on OmniROM, but that's okay because I mean most of those signage and mob pre-built apps are available in in the Play Store now. So. Uh, since a lot of those authors have sort of abstracted them away from signage and mods, so we're not super concerned with that. Um. Huh. So let's check our repo sync over here. Yeah. Pretty exciting stuff, watching a progress, a text progress bar. So, uh, just prepare, preparing for the next step. So what we're going to do next is we're, we're going to uh, set up our environment. Um, and I'm going to make sure that repo is up to date. Repo self-update, all one word. So repo space self-update, all one word to check. Make sure the repo is up to date. Um, and let me just take a look. History. So, sorry, I'm back. I had to grab a... I'm going to provide a link in the description. There is... Uh, so, in one of the guides that I'm looking at, there's a, a section where you extract the proprietary blobs from your Nexus 7. Uh, and those are basically the, 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 the drivers and the DRM and all that crap that are not... Uh, open source for sometimes obvious reasons. Sometimes it's just because N Nvidia is a douchey company and they maintain a proprietary advantage by keeping their stuff closed source. So uh, they cannot be redistributed by OmniROM or Signage Mod or the Android project uh, themselves. So you sort of have to be the end user and download them yourself uh, or extract them from your device themselves. So, so there's in the Android source tree, there's a, a script that you, you use. It's like extract-files.sh. Unfortunately, uh, if you're if you have upgraded your Nexus 7 uh, grouper it, uh, to 4.3, that script does not work. Uh, if you are using the Flow version of the Nexus 7, apparently that script does work. So what I need to do is I need to download. Uh, those uh, delicious bits uh, myself. So 
we are going to use our friend, our, our trusty friend wget uh, to download these. If you're wondering why I'm right-clicking, uh, the terminal application that I use uh, has uses Shift Insert uh, as the keyboard uh, shortcut for pasting, and unfortunately, I do not know where the Insert key is on this keyboard. It's sort of a weird gaming keyboard, so I'm having to do it MS Command Prompt style. So I've got four. Oops. So we get five. Then we get. Now you're you're probably wondering why are you cluttering up your you know your delicious source tree. With all this crap. Well, the problem is, is that the way they've got the stuff packaged up, it's sort of expecting you to be at the root of your uh, source tree. Um, and if you do not put it here, you have to like manually move the files later. And I'm just happy to let them unpack here. So uh, let's see if we can, if I know. XVF fancy if I can do some fa fancy Jedi Jedi mind tricks to get this to extract all of them. Not found in archive. Oh, sorry. <laughs> X. Does it matter? Let's try Aces. I thought that was going to work, but so tar x vf. I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to be like, "Oh, well, obviously you didn't do blah blah blah." Broadcom x vf. This is all very fascinating, you know, and. So some of these are drivers, some of them like ones with orientation sensor, ones the touch panel, which kind of sounds important. Uh, NFC DRM. I can't I wonder what that one does. <laughs> uh, I'll have to poke around at it uh, later. Now, rm star dot t g z. Yay! Oh, my magic wild cards worked. Okay. So, Asus. Now, these, the way they package these up is just about the most evil thing you'll ever see. Um, uh, the license for the software will now be displayed. You must agree to the license before using this software. They have shrink wrapped this in a friggin' uh, thing, and then they uh, make you type this I accept in uh, case sensitive, by the way, uh, thing of Jaggers. So, anyways, we see that it's been uh, unpacked to our vendor, Asus, blah, blah, blah. Um. Extract. I have to do that with each one of these things. It's pretty exciting. You know, I'm just going to go uh, use my cast lock, which is cruise control for cool. Yeah, tell your friends. 
Uh, so that was Broadcom, maybe? What was it? Broadcom, okay. And you know what? I'm just gonna copy pasta. Invents Inventsense, obviously that is a a name you trust, right? Because you totally heard them before today. And shh, extract Nvidia. Space is gonna get you through that much quicker. I'm sure there's like a faster way. No, don't do it again. I just did it. Uh, NXP. And that the other thing too is like it's the same. It appears to be the same license agreement for all of them. So like, it's not even like a, a license agreement that you're doing with them. It's one that you're doing with Google, which doesn't make any sense. I don't know. No reverse engineering, I saw in there. You better not, because you're a pirate. All right, so. Extract, and just do a star. Perfect, clean that up nicely. So I should keep those around just in case, actually. So, should see that we have a whole bunch of we should have eight because we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did I miss one? Asus, Broadcom, Elan, Invincence, wherever they are. Nvidia, NXP. Nerd. I should have eight. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah, there's eight. Because there's seven plus Omni. So we're magic. All right. So that was uh, total BS and ridiculous. Uh, let's set up our build environment. And now that we've gotten that boring stuff out of the way, and uh, oh, uh, yeah, and make sure you're at the root of your. Uh, source tree so now we're going to breakfast and then the code name of the device that you're doing if you're doing uh, the newer Nexus 7 and flow if you're doing grouper or if you're doing the original Nexus 7 you'd be doing grouper which is what I'm doing and um, yeah uh, whatever the code, you know, I think like the S4 is like I9100 because I guess Samsung has terrible code names. Uh, so, and I believe breakfast doesn't take very long. Yeah, that's what I thought. No. File not found. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, all right, so looks like pretty standard stuff. Release. Blah, 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 RC cache is happening. Let's just make sure. Echo use underscore C cache. Oh, sorry. Wow. Special. So equals one, which means true. Uh, 
I don't actually know what the command C root does. I'm familiar with change root. Uh, no idea. Anyways, the guy tells me to run it. Obviously, it does something. Uh, so we've done breakfast. Now, somehow my control or my caps lock key got smacked. So we've done breakfast. Now we're going to do brunch with grouper. Now this this command hopefully is going to uh, compile uh, Omni. We're going to see what happens. I don't know what that omni.dependencies is. Probably not important, right? I mean, it's continuing. So uh, now, something to keep in mind as this is happening. See there, it says you're attempting to be, it's because I'm using OpenJDK. Uh, oh my God, I'm obviously you know doing terrible things. So that's fine. Uh, so this is hopefully going to compile our our uh, our thing, our system together. Um, after this, one of two things is going to happen. <laughs> it's going to spew a whole bunch of garbage on your screen, uh, at the end of which is going to be an error message. <laughs> or it's going to spew a whole bunch of garbage on your machine. Um, and it's going to say, and I've uh, pooped out a, uh, you know, a dot .zip file for you to install on your device, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, hopefully, you want the second one, because that means it's, it's worked. Um, do give this one some time. It takes a while. Um, I have a pretty lousy virtual machine. And uh, I think the last compile I did on it, it took like, um, I'd probably say about 12 hours or so. Um, any extra like CPU and more importantly memory that you can throw at this, uh, at this machine uh, will help immensely. So just keep that in mind. Um, that the quicker, you know, the more resources you, uh, um, throw it at the better. So, let's take a look. It looks like we've already got a, got a, uh, uh an error. Count stat bootable. CD bootable. Recovery. What does it say? Cannot stat. So usually cannot stat means GUI devices. Resources is there. That's weird. Resources. Maybe. So, what was it trying to do? Um, copy. Blah, blah, blah. to reds. Right. Can I, can I, sh 
shut up. I know you want me to be recursive. Okay, let's try that again. Brunch grouper. All right, so hopefully it is not going to do an error message like it did before, and this is going to be magic. Uh, hopefully that was just a bug. I'm sure it was just a bug. Fonts, super important. Anyways, I'm going to pause the recording here for now, and uh, uh, hopefully we will uh, see you on the other side. If not, I'll fire up the recording again and uh, we'll work through any bugs we see. Anyways, hope you folks have, uh, have a good one. See you in a little bit. All right, so it looks like we had a successful compile. This is what it looks like. Package complete. Tells you where it is. Blah, blah, blah. Dot zip tells you a little bit of information about the time it took. Um, yeah, so I'm going to flash this to my device and uh, we'll see what happens. Cross your fingers. If, you, if there's no more videos after this, it means it worked great. So, uh, anyways. Uh, Thanks for watching the video, and uh, please leave any comments. Hopefully I can respond to a couple of them. And uh, hope you enjoyed the adventure. Thanks.